The Denver Broncos have found themselves leaning on their 2020 draft class more than they hoped they would be. They have dealt with some major blows due to injuries, so it's a good thing they have 10 draft picks to fall back on. The team sits at 1-3 and three currently, but while they have not met expectations, they have had some bright spots. Of course, some of those bright spots have been from the rookies, so let's get into what they've shown in the first quarter of the season. First round pick Jerry Judy has managed 55 yards or more in every game so far this season. He has caught 15 of 27 passes thrown his way, though 3 drops in the first 2 weeks led to a rough start. Despite the drops, he is on pace for over 930 yards this season, and that's without having a real breakout game yet. Seeing him eclipse 1,000 yards his rookie year is plausible, and a few big games could really help lead to that. Denver wanted him to be their number two receiver, but with Cortland Sutton missing the season, he had to step up. He is getting better each week, and hopefully he has that breakout game sooner rather than later. KJ Hamlet was a second round pick and has missed some time dealing with a hamstring injury. Despite missing time, he has really shown off why Denver thought so highly of him to take him just after taking Judy. His speed has created problems out there on the field, and he has made some meaningful catches when called upon. He has only played 120 snaps over 3 games, catching 6 of 12 passes for 79 yards, but he did miss the majority of the Jets game. Hamler has major big play potential, and Denver is slowly easing him into their offense, but it's hard when he's hampered by a hamstring injury. Hopefully he comes back soon, because Denver can really use that speed of his, especially when Drew Locke comes back. No draft pick has had more exposure than the Broncos' first of three third round selections, Michael Ojemudia. He entered the season as the number three corner, but he got moved up when AJ Boye got hurt. He had an obvious rookie performance against the Steelers after a strong opener against the Titans. After that bad Steelers performance though, he has been more consistent, but still showing some obvious rookie growing pains. He has broken up multiple passes and got close to a couple of interceptions that just has to go from close to making the play. Outside of Pittsburgh, his highest NFL rating allowed was 62.5, with 47.9 being his lowest allowed against Tampa Bay. Lloyd Cushenberry was a second of three third round picks, and the NFL has not been kind to him so far. He has allowed three sacks in four games with a total of 15 pressures, so there is obvious need for growth. The start of the season for Cushenberry was alright where he allowed only one pressure and looked solid as a run blocker against the Titans. Since then though, his play has been bench worthy and hopefully something Mike Munchak can get figured out. The final third round pick of McTelvin Ajim has played only 26 total snaps on defense despite the injuries they've been dealing with. This year was a year to just develop him and his play has made it obvious it's much needed. Albert Okwebenam, the 4th round pick, has not been active for any games so far this season. A combination of terrible blocking and a hip injury has kept him on the sideline as the Broncos develop him. Justin Cernod was drafted in the 5th round to be the coverage linebacker, but he ended up on injured reserve before the season started. Denver has struggled to find the answer to their coverage linebacker problems, so hopefully he can return next year and solve those issues. Denver went out and got a highly thought of guard with major injury concerns in Nathaniel Moody in the 6th round. He has yet to see action as he really gets back to full health and develops as a player under Mike Munchak. Tyree Cleveland was the first of two 7th round draft picks for the Broncos and he made the roster due to his special teams ability. Denver has gotten some good play out of him, but he has had plays that were obvious rookie plays including a missed block on a punt return that would have opened it for a touchdown. Derek Tuska was the final pick, and he was on the practice squad, but he's now on the 53-man roster. He was a pick for the future more than now, but with injuries occurring, he may be needed sooner than many think. Denver has had flashes from most of the rookies who have played, but none have had that one breakout game yet. With the injuries piling up, Denver really needs them to step up and finally have that breakout game. This is looking like a good draft class at the moment, but Denver needs to see development and growth. This is a young team trying to overcome a lot, so it's a good thing they're getting experience now for what is hopefully a much better 2021 season. For Malahi Huddle and Sports Illustrated, I'm Eric Trickle.